Raja, the floor is yours. Okay, just send me one message. Uh, thank you, Shama. Uh, dear participants, uh, my presentation is on sharing some perspectives uh, on water security and setting the context for supporting the experience sharing in this conference. In this presentation, I aim to cover the following themes. One is, uh, what are the major narratives concerning which are uh, uh, into describing how we are addressing our water concerns, including water security? There is a lot of discussion on Sustainable Development Goal 6. Uh, what is the progress on that? And if progress on that really helping us uh, address our water source security concerns? We then look at various alternative sources of water for enhancing water security before looking at the desalination itself as an option, uh, where we will look at an overview of the pros and cons. And based on this, uh, in taking the uh, uh, discussion further, we will explore or we raising the right question in order to be able to dwell into all aspects of this subject. In addition, we will also be sharing some snapshots from the Indian context, because that is what I'm particularly familiar with, having worked in uh, uh, Indian and uh, various Indian uh, governments. The key uh, areas of narratives on uh, water availability and water uh, issues seem to be organized around some themes uh, which are included here, particularly, say, the climate change related deliberations. Uh, another theme is the integrated water resource management, which is another framework. Then we have a debate and this further discussion on supply side versus demand side and the body of literature saying how we must uh, uh, greatly enhance our demand side management issues. We, of course, have the sustainable development goals itself as a framework. And uh, uh, from the government's own direct action point of view, because the earlier uh, Frameworks are largely, I would say, universal in a, in, in a sense. Government itself is focused on uh, in initiating policies and uh, programs. Programs in particular is favored by the administrative system because it focuses on hard uh, uh, budgets, hard infrastructure uh, spend, and seems to be a way forward. But the key issue which would like to raise over here is uh, in all these larger frameworks, are we kind of diluting the, the direct issue of are we having enough source of water? In other words, is this source issue of source security getting buried under these larger narrative and frameworks? Is it time where, uh, despite the fact that all these are important, all these frameworks are important, this is not to belittle them, but all of them tackle multiple elements. All of them call for actions on numerous fronts. And uh, the concern is, is there also a need to now have something which is directly raising the issue of water source security? If you don't have enough source of water, can you manage it? Just like, for example, when you plan for your expenditure as a household budget, you first look at your you know, income stream from all sources. What is your income? then you manage your uh, uh, income. So in the same way, are we getting this issue of source security somewhat underplayed? It's there, but not there. It's embedded, but not so explicit. This, is, this seems to be the issue with these larger frameworks, but we will take a closer look at uh, uh, one particular framework, which is a sustainable development goal six. Now we all know that sustainable development goal six is focused on universal um, availability of water and sanitation. Let's deconstruct the framework somewhat. So each goal, including this goal, has targets and their indicators. Now, I would like to bring your attention to two aspects of this in this slide. One is on the left-hand side, you see that uh, for, uh, the, uh, for uh, water and sanitation, the United Nations has come out with eight targets and, uh, and 11 indicators. Various countries are allowed to come out with their own uh, depending upon the circumstances. And in the Indian context, we have come out with four targets and seven indicators. First of all, what is the implication of these reduced indicators in terms of our ability to manage water source security? This is a more detailed discussion, but I will take one of the uh, first core indicator of direct access to water, which is shown in this diagram here. Please first follow the 
a block arrows, not the dotted ones. It seems to be universal access. Yes, when we define universal access, we look into affordability and equity of drinking water. And the focus is on uh, households. If you see the uh, dotted arrows, we come and say, what about the other segments? The SDG 6, as of now, is not so equally explicit in meeting the water requirements of all. They have defined uh, the water uh, uh, focus on drinking water and households. We want to say that the water security is a need across sectors, and underlying this is water source security. So the question to raise here, again, two, two challenges. One is, if we progress on the SDG indicators, does it automatically imply improved water availability, water source security? And number two, we do not yet have water source security as an explicit indicator or target. Is this OK? Um, yes, it may be embedded, but uh, is it uh, uh, diluting the debate further? Let's look at the SDG framework uh, uh, again, taking a very specific example, again, drawn from the Indian context. Uh, we have a state called Andhra Pradesh, where when we did analysis, it is the first ranked state in terms of SDG 6, which means uh, is universal uh, access to water and sanitation. Now, uh, in our scoring system, I'm sorry, in our scoring system, they scored 90 out of 100. They're number one in India. They have a population of 50. But if we start analyzing how the indicator has been defined, uh, the access, universal access to water has been defined in terms of percentage of houses having improved access to water. Now, this raises the issue, how do you define this access? Is it a number of taps? Is it infrastructure spend? Is it quantity of water? Uh, this raises a larger issue of you know, this data being, uh, 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 which is backing all these analysis of SDG to be made available and to be made available uh, in a public manner so that analysts and researchers can uh, uh, cross-check and uh, uh, see how it fits in. A second aspect in this state is that in the same year when it was regarded as having uh, been the uh, most leading state in India, the newspaper headlines read as, uh, the state is having a major water crisis. So what is the lesson from this? The lesson from this is that even though there has been good progress on SDG as an indicator, it did not mean that they had uh, a good water source security. Now, second is the official SDG data cannot be read in isolation. And for each domain area, we have to read it in conjunction with other documentation, research, and reports for that particular uh, region. This again is only to ratify the issue of uh, uh, water source security by itself needing to become uh, more explicitly addressed. Then moving on, uh, we have looked at SDG 6 and its ability to address directly water source security. Over here, we are uh, looking into aspects of uh, how do we identify the various sources of water for enhanced water availability and therefore water source security. These have been grouped into two categories. One is better management and quote unquote additional water. Better management, three actions have been suggested, which is uh, reducing the non-revenue water or uh, unaccounted for water. Uh, uh, these acronyms are uh, generally used by the industry experts. Now, if you take several cities, perhaps in many developing countries, this unaccounted for water is 50 to maybe 60%. So they say, let's take action on reducing this. Then item number two, this is more illustrative of the Indian context. Maybe it's applicable in some other countries. The investments of water towards irrigation projects and supporting irrigation is maybe 70%, 80%, even 90% of all the water-related investment budgets, which means we are not here to say, let there be less for irrigation. We're just saying that a 2 to 3% efficiency improvement in this investment towards irrigation may release huge amounts of water for more irrigation, but also for households and industry, et cetera. We also have a third action which says aquifer recharge and effective collecting of rainwater uh, uh, runoffs and uh, various cities and states are gearing up uh, projects in these areas. A fourth action is the enhanced use of sewage uh, uh, water after treatment. For example, if there's a city which produces uh, uh, 
say thousand uh, not producers yes uh, transmits thousand million uh, liters of uh, water per day then a large proportion of this can be possibly reclaimed now the last uh, additional source of water is uh, desalination but unlike uh, stp reclaimed water this is literally expanding the source of water available stp is really giving new life to the water but the question and deliberation here is that there can be pros in desalination there can be cons in desalination but talking about desalination may itself give us more clarity relating to all the sources in order to limit desalination or in order to take it forward so the key thing is we have to understand all the sources now one of the challenges here is that uh, are we having very explicit sdg metrics and state level metrics and metrics de uh, derived from water policies in various uh, nations covering at least these action points 1 to 4 so that uh, uh, we know what is the total quantum which is available from various sources we may for example in the sdg framework we do say we have to increase uh, so which reclaimed water but it is treated more from a demand management and not from a water source and so we still don't know what is the total quantity available from all sources as a map so while the sdg metrics and other metrics are there maybe we need direct metrics in these even for proponents who say we must uh, uh, engage in actions 1 2 3 4 5 we must have percentages for nrw and ufw uh, reductions and measure these things similarly for the others having seen these various sources if we come directly to the uh, looking at desalination itself as a source the pros are of course uh, nine, more than 97% of all water is uh, sea water so it seems to be an abundant uh, resource a high availability but the cons many people point out is that there are environmental concerns brine is discharged maybe other forms of pollution are there which are not properly documented and uh, 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 this has is a cause for concern similarly the cost of water treatment through this source is very high maybe highest amongst all the options but over here would like to say are we comparing like to like if uh, uh, for example we have a political economy issue of Uh, uh, uh what is it reclaiming stp treated water if it's never going to take place or if it's not going to be appropriately addressed in 20 or 30 years because of other complex problems then does it mean we cannot try to get a good source of fresh water from desalination another issue is can newer technologies and further technologies actually be uh, uh, focused to address these kind of cons shama just tell me how much time i have then i will you have another 5 minutes raja you can you can right. okay right so we we looked at uh, 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 the fact of uh, water source security not being explicit we looked at various uh, uh, sources of water as options but we looked at pros and cons of desalination at a high level but in order to address where desalination should fit we should also consider whether we are asking the right questions now some of these questions are placed here more can uh, develop and they can guide us even uh, uh, subsequent to this particular conference first of all why hasn't the cost of desalination technology cost you know come down like in solar i mean will it in future is there adequate efforts being made in this regard second why are we building or planning large scale desalination uh, projects without structured deliberations on all the options being assessed and then determining where desalination fits into water security particularly water source security maybe it's happening in some countries better than others but uh, in many developing countries i think there is scope for uh, considerable improvement in addressing these questions third are the academic and scientific communities and their research is it being done in isolation or are their research also uh, uh, you know actively being grounded by working on desalination facilities and uh, 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 project areas it's interesting that the governments usually own these desalination projects and facilities and many of these research communities can be drawn from government so i don't see an issue of confidentiality and for their part is government inviting these people to promote and measure what kind of innovation is happening on their own facilities it's like right hand and left hand 
taking this further have we you know defined uh, uh, the uh, research design effort and uh, to continuously address the core problem if we say it's a high cost or undesirable environmental impact are we particularly putting budgets and money sort on these and we if we as academic community look at this have we been looking at or are the communities looking at what are the patents and iprs coming out in this direction who is funding so on and so forth and finally what does it really take to focus attention of the best and brightest including the social scientists in defining incentives collaboration models and other things to make this happen do we need practically a nobel prize type of category just for water source security we have some stockholm prize for water but it covers governance and many other things we don't have desalination or we don't have nrw reduction i mean all these concrete things would like to quickly give you uh, now you have to wind up yeah quick perspective just on uh, 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 desalination in india uh, what just wanted to share with you through this uh, diagram is that Uh, the ministry of science ministry of uh, uh, environment and others have at many points of time have committed that desalination is important among other options and they have said they're going to bring detailed dprs and projects and guidelines as also policy but in some cases it's waited for 13 years in the most recent case of niti aayog which is like an extension of uh, the uh, prime minister's office uh, it is about 2 years so it has not moved in this Yes, a lot of important work is being done, but maybe we are not seeing the solution end game in terms of budgets, programs, and data in uh, uh, public domain. Last two slides I want to quickly mention is that uh, again the Niti Aayog in this context, if you want to discuss water security, desalination, relevant, non-relevant, it says India is in its worst crisis in history. They said six hundred million people, which is like Europe and America, USA put together, are facing acute stress. it is saying that uh, uh, there is 70% uh, uh, pollution kind of thing that last is that uh, we have an issue where uh, say uh, it uh, this is just one example the example can be taken to other uh, uh, countries we are having where one country is building a big dam uh, uh, in this case china in the tibet area for the flows which might come into india now we're not going into the merits which is good which is not good but maybe a case for desalination may also be reducing political risk mitigation uh, between nation states and therefore making water conflict less likely and last and in closing what are the conclusions and way forward yes initially the discourse was on to desalinate or not to desalinate that became extended okay if it's relevant uh, to what extent and where uh, should it be done we feel this discourse needs to be you know converted more into having a good understanding of all the sources then having a good understanding of where desalination uh, fits into all of this in terms of both policy and in terms of water security before they do projects and last is we also have to simultaneously look at can desalination be done in a better way and support all the constituent uh, uh, institutions in in, uh, in achieving this so we feel both water security and desalination is uh, maybe an issue of uh, you know urgent not urgent but important and therefore getting uh, diluted and we hope the deliberations can focus on all uh, aspects of strengthen water security uh, thank you very much thank you <laughs> thank you for this excellent presentation can you stop sharing we have got 5 yeah. minutes 5 minutes to take any important questions just you, you have to stop sharing your screen first yeah on the zoom yeah so we have 5 f- minutes does anybody want to throw a question raise your hand i will call upon them we will be having a discussion section at the end you know where we can uh, where you can post your questions to everyone does anybody want to say anything speak out now okay so then i i have a little question for you raja Uh, right. i am not able to understand uh, this discrepancy between the data coming from the different sources so this is very fascinating because this is not only the indian case it is it is happening worldwide so uh, you know because on one side you know some some people are saying there is a insecurity on the other side we are 
we are doing so well that state was particularly uh, illuminating so i just wanted to know uh, why do you think this is happening right uh, i'll provide my uh, my thought around it uh, i feel number one is that uh, the water data itself is in uh, uh, you know spread amongst multiple institutions number one number two uh, I want to uh, 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 emphasize that I support government and the various agencies, including Niti Aayog, in trying to uh, implement these systems and collecting data. Because the thing is, only in institutionalizing these systems, the kinks will show up, right? And then we can refine and correct it. But the trouble happens when there is a pressure on governments everywhere to show that they are right. and not that uh, this is a complex area and uh, only by you know rolling out these efforts and systems and indicators uh, we will kind of clean up the system itself second i feel all this makes a case for you know more uh, uh, public availability of the data amongst various uh, stakeholders so that they can check because the governments don't have the time they are under immense pressure for roll out and implementation whereas researchers and academics with time on our hands we can check do the various data uh, and information speak to each other and when it doesn't you know we bring it up to them and it can be further refined this is true of private sector as well as public sector so we have to be empathetic with government uh, it's not to uh, uh, show them up but if for me it did look odd that the number one state is also having a huge crisis in terms of uh, water at that time and what does it really tell are the various data talking to each other second i feel the important lesson is that uh, like in financial analysis we are taught uh, when we look at uh, financial ratios of company do not look at ratios in isolation so similarly the main lesson is that sdg information cannot be treated as an isolated report in any domain activity in th- in this case it is water then we'll have to see all the localized other information other reports uh, other studies and uh, common uh, popular media see it all together and see that uh, uh, does it talk to each other and then do a moderation thank you very much uh, now i'm going to